Hi, this is Leslie Kamenoff, and uh, my friend Kate Holcomb and I are going to lead you through my hands-free warrior sequence. Kate is standing in Samastiti taking three deep, even breaths. Her heels are placed evenly under her sitting bones, and she's just holding her hands in Namaste at her chest. After the third breath, uh, we're going to pivot on that left heel, turning it about 45 degrees to the side, keeping the heels spaced, sitting bone distance apart. This is a kind of a short step. Uh, we're only concerned with getting the front chin perpendicular rather than the front thigh parallel. So the exhale spirals the arms inward, and then the inhale spirals them open. And notice how on the exhale, the front knee is straightening, and on the inhale, it's bending, coming straight out over that ankle. We really want to go for shape change here in the rib cage and upper spine. That's it. She's spiraling a little further in that exhale. And the inhale takes us up into that modified warrior one position. Good. Now this next exhale takes us down over that bent knee with the hands alongside the foot. And the inhale lifts in the upper spine and brings us all the way back up into that warrior one with the front knee steady. And then the exhale takes us back down. We're keeping the front knee steady over the ankle as we do these movements here. Each of the movements we do will be repeated three times with three breaths. And the exhale comes down. And the inhale back up to that warrior one position. Now from here, again, keeping that front knee steady, the arms are being lowered parallel to the floor. And here, the breath is going to spiral the arms inward and the sternum downward. And then the inhale spirals in the other direction, open. So here we're really having a chance to breathe with the upper part of the lungs and rib cage. This is actually preparation for the arm position for a warrior two. And then the inhale opens. And here an interesting double spiral happens in the arms. Everything above the elbows stays spiraled open, but from the elbows down, the forearms spiral downward. And that's the arm position for warrior two. The next exhale is going to turn towards the back leg, taking everything from the hip joints up towards the back leg. So that'll happen after the third breath in this position. So that turn is going to happen on that third exhale. See, she's trying to keep her thighs steady where they are. The pelvis and everything above it is turning towards the back leg for the warrior two. The front knee should stay steady here. And then the gaze is directed over that front arm. Three deep breaths in this position as well. You're intended to feel this in your leg muscles. So the idea of keeping that knee steady over the ankle is about building up that action in the legs. The more you support with your legs in this position, the freer the breathing structures and spine can be. And now with this third exhale, we're dropping down. That hand is going about mid-shin, the front hand. The top hand is now reaching up with the inhale, gazing up at it. And the exhale swoops it around the back as the gaze turns down towards the foot. The next few breaths are going to repeat this movement, inhaling, gazing up, reaching through the top arm, exhaling, spiraling it back and looking down. Inhaling, lifting up and gazing up. And exhaling, spiraling it back and looking down. Now from here, a deep breath lifts the sternum up towards the sky and an exhale extends that front knee without dragging the sternum down with it. Good. And then the final movement here to complete this modified triangle is the inhale that reaches the arm and the gaze upward. And then three steady breaths in this position, which is the modified extended triangle. And then the third exhale is going to turn towards the front leg dropping the hands on either side and releasing the spine, the neck. The front knee is soft, slightly bent.
So that same procedure is going to now happen in the other direction as we go for revolved triangle. So after a few breaths in this Parshvottanasana position, the opposite hand is going to cross over the front leg, and it's again going to be suspended about mid-shin. And then the other arm, the top arm, is reaching back. And that same movement is going to happen with the inhale. The top arm reaches up, the gaze directs up towards it, and the exhale reverses the position back to where you started. Again, the front knee is bent over the ankle and staying steady there as you do these movements with the breath. Exhaling, the arm swoops back, the gaze looks down, and then for the third time, it reaches up with the inhale as you gaze up at it, and the exhale brings the arm down. Now the eyes keep looking down, the sternum lifts up, well, she lifted her head there, but she could have kept it down, and then the leg straightens on the exhale. <laughs> the idea is to turn the gaze up at this point when you reach the hand or towards the sky. And then three breaths, steady, even breaths in this position. Revolved triangle. And after that third breath, the exhale turns back towards the front leg. You release through the spine and the base of the skull. And you're in that Parshvatanasana once more. The alignment's a little better in this Parshvatanasana because you've just turned your pelvis in the direction of the alignment for the pose. So this is where you can really take those breaths and work on your samastiti, the equal standing in both legs in this position while releasing the spine over the front leg. The inhale lifts us up. This is preparation for the third warrior and it's been placed conveniently at the end of the sequence when your legs are at their maximum tiredness. You're welcome. So there you're extending through the spine, reaching through the crown of the head and the back foot simultaneously and steadying yourself over that steady leg. Now here, feel free to use whatever arm position serves you best. Here Kate is reaching back, which is great. You can reach to the side, you can reach to the front. It's about being steady and being able to breathe. After the third breath, you drop the back leg. You're briefly up there in that warrior one again. And then the exhale brings the arms down. And from here, we turn the feet so they're facing in the same direction. Take a little bit of a wider stance. And a nice deep breath raises the arms up. And the exhale, well, she didn't raise her arms up there. You could have done that. And you exhale and come down. Kate was doing the sequence for the very first time in the studio when we shot uh, the photos for the article. So uh, there may be some slight uh, differences between what we depict in the photographs in the article and what you're seeing here in the video. And uh, please do feel free to experiment. Uh, this is just a starting point for exploration. So we come back up, and we're going to return back to the beginning, which is Samastiti. The heels are placed again under the sitting bones, and a few steady breaths here. So that same sequence, of course, is going to repeat now on the other side. So here now the right foot is going to lift and turn, pivoting on that heel to a, a, about a 45 degree angle. Now. I say about a 45 degree angle, that's completely negotiable. If you start to feel sensations in the ankle or the knee of that back leg in the stance, feel free to adjust that angle uh, in a way that makes your joints happier. Now, you never want to um, push through joint pain. Uh, the strong sensations you'll feel in your muscles in the sequence are sort of what we're going for, but joint pain should always be a signal to reconsider your alignment and play with something that works better for you. So here, again, the front leg is straightening on the exhale. It's bending on the inhale as the arms rise up. She's putting her knee a little bit past the ankle here. Um, the idea is really you only need to get to 90 degrees with that front shin on these movements. So she's, as I said, she was still learning the sequence as we were doing the shoot, as you will be uh, 
when you move through it. So that front knee stays steady here on this exhale where we come all the way down. And you want to keep the front knee steady over the ankle as you come back up with the inhale. That's it. So that's done three times with the breath. The exhale takes you forward and down. And she is moving that front knee around a bit, but uh, the stronger you get and the more familiar with the sequence, the more you can keep it steady over the ankle. And the exhale takes you down. And then the third breath brings you back up. And from here, the arms are going to lower parallel to the floor. Again, this is the preparation for the warrior two arms. So we're going to spiral the arms inward, drop the sternum, drop the gaze. That's your exhale. Spiral them open, lift the sternum. There's your inhale. You do that three times. And again, you want to keep that front knee steady. She's letting it wander around a bit there. You know, she's starting to get a little tired, so that's understandable. And on this third breath, after this third breath, everything from below the elbow is going to spiral downward where everything above stays open in that inhaled position. And that's that double spiral in the arms, which is the preparation for warrior two. So you take a few breaths here, feeling that intensity in the arms. And then on the third exhale, everything from the hip joints up is going to turn with that exhale towards the back leg. Again, you want to keep the thighs steady and the front knee over the ankle. You have to particularly check the front knee here because it's going to want to dive inward. And you want to keep that external spiral in that front leg. And this is warrior three. A few breaths here in this steady position. And then after the third breath, the exhale takes you down. That front arm is going to drop to about mid shin and it's going to suspend there. A lot of people like to use blocks here, but I don't let them put any weight on the block. So it doesn't make sense to use it anyway. The idea is to not let your arm become part of your base of support. See, she's letting that knee wander. Good. And then inhale, rise up. And exhale, spiral down. So this is a way of uh, protecting the neck muscles. Uh, doing extended triangle for many people is more stressful on their neck than even things like shoulder stand and plow. So if we're going to spend any time at all with that arm raised up and the head turned toward it, we want to make sure the neck is warmed up. See, she straightened her knee a little prematurely there. What I'd like to do is to inhale, raise the arm up, and then extend the knee. But see what works for you. You can play with different sequences. The idea is to keep your sternum lifted as you straighten that front leg and not let the act of straightening the front leg drag your sternum down towards the floor. So here there's three breaths in extended triangle. And the third exhale takes you down. This is the Parshvottanasana where the alignment isn't so great because you've just turned your pelvis away from its alignment with the extended triangle. And you'll have a different feeling in this position uh, the next time you come into it after revolved triangle, which is what's coming next. So after the third breath in this position, the inhale lifts us up. And now the opposite hand is going to cross over that front leg. And it's going to, again, be suspended about mid-shin. And she's a little high there. Inhale, the arm raises up. And then exhale, it spirals down, and you gaze at the front foot. And the inhale raises you up. And the exhale, spiral down. You'll definitely notice that you have an easy and a hard side uh, with these poses, especially in revolved triangle, because it's a rather intense spiral. And the idea is really to keep both legs grounded and to just work the breath. So now she's inhaling and raising the sternum, exhaling and straightening the knee without letting it drag the sternum downward. And then that final inhale raises the top arm into this modified revolved triangle. And three steady, even breaths here in this position. And after that 
third inhale, the next exhale takes you back down towards the front and the arms drop on either side of the foot. And because, again, you've turned the pelvis into more of the alignment for this position, it uh, is probably going to feel different than the last time you did it. You want to really release all the muscles around the base of the skull here. Notice that we're letting the spine round into flexion. We're not trying to constantly extend and straighten and lengthen it here. We're actually going for that flexion in the spine. So the forehead and the knee are actually moving towards each other in that pose. So here's the preparation for warrior three. You raise up. This is where you're extending the spine and lengthening it. This is what we call axial extension of the spine. So you're reaching out through the crown of the head and creating a straight line of reach through your spine, right out the back leg and foot, and taking that shape, that extended shape, and pivoting it over the standing leg. This is your warrior three. Again, find the arm position. She's, she's as tired here. We've been shooting photos all day long, and we did the videos. This is the last big effort to stay steady. She's doing a great job. And then you raise up and come into that warrior one and release the arms. And turn the feet in the same direction, wide stance, and raise up and flow downward. This is a counter pose. It's an inversion. It's a rest pose. You have certainly earned it if you've stayed with us and done the sequence, uh, I guarantee you it gets easier with repetition and it builds a strong, steady base in your legs and pelvis and feet, which leaves your spine and breathing structures much freer to do their job. We'll come back to where we started, Samastiti, and that's the sequence. I hope you enjoy it, and feel free to experiment and have fun.